Romans chapter 13, we've jumped off into a study of good citizenship, looking at what the rest of the Bible has to instruct us concerning government and its role in society, as well as how to respond to different forms of government, both foreign and domestic. And we looked last week into the first point on our outline on Good Citizenship 201, looking at the subject of oppression. And so a quick review here as we're going to be picking up where we left off last week. We began last week by looking into 1 Samuel chapter 8, where God first instituted a king for his people, the nation of Israel. Of course, they had local government, they still had family, the basic building block of society, but they had no central authority that was over all of the tribes of Israel. And when God established that central authority of the kingship, he warned the people about the practice of the king who will reign over you, that he will take, and that you will become his slaves. And so central government, central authority, as it's removed from the family, as it's removed from local relationships and kind of like a tribe type situation, it's going to become more oppressive the further government is away from the people that is, it is governing. That's a biblical principle here in 1 Samuel chapter 8. And we must expect that the price of having a central government that is in control of our nation is that we are going to become tax slaves and we are going to lose certain freedoms as a result of having that central government. And that is God's will for us to submit to that government because we live in an imperfect world, we can expect government to be imperfect, and there is a cost for having a strong central authority, as we do have a need for a strong central authority. 